Hey everybody, this is Mr. Ainsworth. Good morning to you guys. All right, we're going to get into a part two here in a subject called linear programming where we apply the systems of inequalities that you learned in prior lessons. Linear programming is a very cool subject, okay? It is an application of mathematics in the field of business and industry and social science, economics, and engineering where you apply systems and inequalities to solve real world problems. You see, in business, you either want to maximize, look at this, you want to maximize your uh, profit or you want to minimize your cost, you know, in business. And so what uh, George Danzig, okay, which is George's right here, okay, uh, he and a couple other guys, John von Neumann and Leonid Kantorovich, okay, back in the 1940s, all right, they develop a field called linear programming, which utilizes the system of inequalities to optimize a problem, or, or to, in other words, to solve a problem using what's called a system of inequalities, which you know how to graph. So what we did was, in, in the first couple examples here, and you saw this in a, uh, with me the other day, is that we took a system of inequalities, we graphed it, and we call the solution region a feasible region, and we'll explain why more later, why we call this crazy feasible region. Okay, that's what the George and the guys called it back in the day, and there was a reason for that. We also found the vertices of this feasible region, A, B, and C, which we call corner points or vertices. We took them and we learned how to maximize or minimize a function. What I mean by maximize, I mean find the highest or biggest value. Minimize meaning the smallest or the uh, lowest value. We did that on the next page here. We took this uh, function here and we found our corner points and we substituted them in one at a time and we found a maximum and we found a minimum. And we learn how to state that as an optimal or best solution. So what we want to do here is take these basic skills of linear programming and get good at them through a series of examples. We did number nine in class. I checked it with you guys, okay? And then I assigned number 10. Hopefully you checked it with my solutions yesterday that I sent out. So today what we want to do is take a look at number 11. So turn to number 11. Uh, I want to cover this with you because this is a, an example where we learn how to minimize and not maximize, but minimize this function right here, which we call z this time, not f, but z. You can call it any variable you want, which is equal to 3x plus 4y. You know, what corner point of the feasible region will minimize this? Okay, so what we want to do is we want to take each of these inequalities, and there's four of them here. Inequality 2x plus y greater than or equal to x is the first one. We're going to take the second one. And this one here, there's actually two inequalities here. When x comma y is greater than or equal to 0, well, x is greater than or equal to 0. That's the third one. And y is greater than or equal to 0. That's the fourth one. So really, we have four inequalities here to graph. And what we're going to do is we're going to graph them one at a time. And we're going to find and label the solution region or the feasible region to find our corner points so that we can minimize this function right here. Okay, so here we go. Let's take inequality number one, uh, which is right here, 2x plus y greater than or equal to 8. And we're going to get in slope-intercept form, and we're going to solve for y here so we can graph it. Solve for y. Get in slope-intercept form. So subtract 2x, and we get y greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 8. So the slope's negative 2, and the y-intercept's 8. So what you want to do is treat uh, negative 2 as a fraction. We're going to consider that it is rise over run, and we're going to go down to right 1 from this y-intercept here. Okay, so here we go. We're going to go up 8, so 2, 4, 6, 8, and just enlarge the number so you can see it right here. And we're going to go down to right 1 from that point. So 1, 2, down, right 1. 1, 2, down, right 1. Down 2, 1, 2, right 1. Just count. Okay, and you write there and intersects it right there at 4. All right, so take your uh, straight edge out, and let's graph this boundary line. We need to determine whether it's solid or dotted, so we do that by looking at this right here, the inequality. And I can see uh, right here that it's greater than, so it's going to be above, and it's equal to, so it's solid. So write down solid boundary line and above. Okay, so we're going to keep it solid, and I'm going to graph above. So let's label this y greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 8. And that's inequality number 1. 
the question is, where do all these inequalities intersect? You know, where is the feasible region? So what we do is you graph one at a time, and you shade it, and you show where the solutions are, because the end result is the intersection, the overlap of all four of these. Okay, so let's work on number two now. Uh, X plus 2Y less than or equal to 10. So let's solve for Y again. So here we go. So let's subtract X. And we get 2Y is less than or equal to negative X plus 10. Divide everything by 2. I'm talking all three terms here. And then identify the slope. So we have Y less than or equal to negative 1 half, pull out the slope, plus 5. Okay, so I can see the slope's uh, negative 1 half. And I can see that the y-intercept's 5. So I need to graph this first. So I'm going to switch to red here. Okay, so uh, the slope is negative 1 half, and the y-intercept's 5. So let's start here at 5. There's 5 right here. I'm going to, okay. I'm gonna, actually, I'm going to switch to green. Ooh, just for funsies. It's Christmas time. So here we go. There's 5. I'm going to go down 1, right 2 for his negative 1 half slope. So down 1, right 2. Ooh, I just found the intersection point. 1, down 1, right 2. Down 1, right 2. Down 1, right 2. Down 1, right 2. Okay, and looking at the inequality, I can see by looking at this that it's going to be solid but below because it's less than. So write down solid and below boundary line. So I'm going to graph a solid line. Let's take your straight edge out. There we go. All right. And it's going to be below the boundary line. Draw many arrows, okay? And let's label this y less than or equal to negative 2, excuse me, negative 1 half, x plus 5. You got to label your work as you go, because in the end, what we want to do is find the intersection of all these inequalities. Okay, now I'm going to switch to red. X greater than or equal to zero is a vertical boundary line. Okay, all X values, here's, here's the X axis here. Here's zero, one, two, three, and so on. So all the X values that are greater than or equal to zero start at zero and go to the right. So this is a vertical boundary line and to the right. Okay, X greater than or equal to zero. Okay, and now I'm going to switch to, let me pick another color here. I'm going to pick black, okay? Y greater than or equal to zero. Well, let me see Y values here, and all Y values that are greater than or equal to zero are like one, two, three, four. They're above. So they're up, guys. They're above this X axis right up here. So this is Y greater than or equal to zero. It's a horizontal boundary line, okay, and above. So the question is, where does the black and the blue and the green and the red overlap? Keep in mind, these arrows right here are infinite, okay? So these red arrows, they don't stop right here. They continue all the way to the right, all the way over here. So where does the, the red, the black, the blue, and the green overlap? So if you look here, let's call this uh, region number, let's say, 1, and this region 2, and over here, 3, four, five, six, uh, seven, okay, eight, okay, nine over here, and then inside here, this is region 10. Ooh, this is region 11 in here. There's a lot of regions in here, so where in the world do they overlap? Okay, well, you'll notice that where all the colors overlap is region 10, all right? The green, uh, let me see, the only color that's not in 11, it can't be 11, is because the uh, the blue goes above this boundary line here. So blue is not in this region number 11 here. So it can't be number 11. can't be 5 because, uh, well, only green's in there. And let's see. Oh, can't be 4. can't be 1 uh, because, you know, green is below this boundary line. So get out your highlighter here, guys. And it is actually in here. Okay, so we have a triangle, a triangular, a triangle shape, okay, where this corner point here, let's call it A, is a corner point, a vertex, this one, we'll call this one right here B, and we'll call this one right here C. 
So a is, let me see, right 2 up 4. So 2 comma 4, that's a corner point. B is just right 4, 4 comma 0. And then C, well, that's right 10, so 10 comma 0. And those are our corner points of the feasible region. So this is a, what's called a feasible region, or what's called a solution region. All right, and it's in the shape of a triangle this time. All right, and what we want to do is take these three corner points, A, B, and C, and we're going to maximize, uh, no, no, minimize the function. All right, evaluate each vertex. This is step number two, A, B, and C, and we're going to minimize, not maximize. Why? Because if you look up here, it says minimize, okay? Minimize the function. So Z equals 3X plus 4Y. So let's write that down. Z equals 3x plus 4y. We're going to write the vertices over here, vertex. Let me see, a, and let's go back up to the graph here. What is a? Okay, so a is 2 comma 4. So let's go down here at 2 comma 4. So 2 comma 4. B is um, 4 comma 0. And C is 10 comma 0. And what we want to do is substitute them in. We want to take these, substitute them in the objective function here, and we're going to minimize it. We're going to look for the minimum. Okay, so here we go. Z is equal to 3 times X, which is 2, plus 4 times 4, which is Y. Okay, what is this? Well, 6 plus 16, that's 22. So Z equals 22 first. Okay, now B, let's see is a different value probably, right? So X is 4 and Y is 0. So substitute in 4, substitute in 0, and you get 12 plus 0 equals 12. On C, though, let me see. We got 3 times X, which is 10. So 3 times 10 plus 4 times 0. Notice how I'm substituting in each time, here and here and here. I just take the... Uh, variables or the values and substitute them in. And this time though I get 30 plus 0 or 30. So my results are 22, 12, and 30. So which one is the minimum? Well this minimum is the smallest. And right here I can see 12 is the smallest. So this is the minimum and this is what I need. So my optimal or best solution, optimal meaning best, is the minimum all right, is 12 and occurs at point uh, point B, whoop, point B at 4 comma 0. So my best or optimal solution is B, point B, and it gives me a minimum of 12. If I wanted to maximize, I would choose A because that gives me 22. But this problem, if you read it up top here, it says minimize, okay? You have to read the problem. So if it's like a minimum profit function where you want to minimize the profit, excuse me, minimize the cost. You want to always minimize the cost, maximize the profit. Sorry about that. All right, you would choose the minimum. If it was a maximum profit situation where you want to maximize the profit and make the most money, you choose the maximum or the biggest, and that would be at A at 222. Okay, but this problem called for minimum, so I'm going to pick point B as my, as my point of choice, all right, because it gives me the minimum. It's 12 is smaller than 22 and 30. And that is optimal meaning best. Okay, so what you guys need to do is, uh, first of all, if this is a video, guys, so remember this. If it's a since it's a video, you can always rewind it and listen to it again, okay? Take advantage of the technology and use it to your advantage. If I go too fast, which I typically do, then rewind it and listen to it again. Listen to any part of it, so it until you understand it. All right, and then move on, because you won't be able to do the next one unless you understand this one. All right, you got to understand all the nuts and bolts of it. All right, so what I want you guys to do now is try number 12. So I want you to pause the video, give it a shot, and then after you're done, run the video and check your solution. Okay? Go ahead and pause the video, guys, and give it a shot. Okay, we're back, and I'm assuming you... 
already did this, so let's run through the uh, solution here. We want to do another minimum problem. We want to minimize z again, but this time it's a different function, and we have different constraints. We got first one, second one, and remember this is two, two inequalities. This is the third one, and your fourth one is y greater than x0. So we got four inequalities here, and this is a challenging one because, you know, we got to isolate y in both cases. So let's go for it here. We're going to get 4x plus 3y is greater than or equal to 24. We're going to have to isolate y again. Okay, and you got to subtract 4. So you get 3y is greater than or equal to negative 4x plus 24. Divide by 3. And you get y greater than or equal to negative 4 thirds x plus 8. All right, so let's put this in uh, black and let's... Let's uh, graph it here. Slopes, negative 4 thirds, y-intercepts 8. So 2, 4, 6, 8. So let's start here. Go down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Right 3. Down 4. Right 3. Okay. When I look at the inequality right here, it's going to be solid and above. So let's graph it solid and above. And let's label it. y greater than or equal to negative 4 thirds x plus 8. Alright, one step at a time. Okay, next one here. <coughs> Excuse me. I got uh, number 2. I got 4x plus y uh, less than or equal to 16. So subtract uh, 4x, subtract 4x here and here, and you get y less than or equal to negative 4x plus 16. So in this case, we're going to have to go way up here. I'm going to switch different colors. I'm going to go red this time just for funsies here. 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 is way up here. I'm going to start way up here at 16. Okay? And then I'm going to go down 4, right 1. Okay, there is your slope. Your y-intercept is negative uh, 16, po positive 16. Your slope of negative 4 is down 4, right 1. So go 1, 2, 3, 4, right 1. 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 So here we go. It's going to be solid and below, looking at the inequality right here. Let me write that down. So we're going to go solid and below. Okay, and so what do we have here? There we go. All right, solid and below. All right, and let's label y less than or equal to negative 4x plus 16. Okay. Next one, we want to graph the what are called non-negative constraints, okay? When x is greater than or equal to 0 and y greater than or equal to 0, they are called non-negative constraints. Non-negative constraints, okay? Which means they have to be positive, okay? So x greater than or equal to 0 is vertical. So when x is greater than or equal to 0, it's this way. Well, let me switch to green. So it's a vertical boundary line and to the right. Let's label that x greater than or equal to 0. And then I'm going to go to blue. This one's going to be blue here. This is going to be horizontal boundary line. When y is greater than or equal to 0, it's above 0. Like 1, 2, 3, 4, all these y values, guess what? They're above 0. So it's going to be a horizontal boundary line and above. Okay, they're above the x-axis. When y is greater than or equal to 0, it's above the x-axis. So where does the, where do all these intersect? Where do all of them intersect? And so we need to figure that out. So uh, let's see, it's below, it's below this one here in red. It's got to be in the red. Where's the red, the green, the black? Holy cow. Uh, where does the the red, the green, the black, and the blue. So the blue goes infinitely up. Okay, keep that in mind. These are infinite arrows here. So blue goes whoo, 
cool way up here. So the blue intersects the red and the black up here, but it also intersects the green. Look at this. The green goes to the right. The black goes up. The Let me see. The black's up, and the red is down. So red, green, blue, black, all these colors, they all intersect in this little skinny little triangle in here. So let me highlight it. It's kind of hard to see, but if you look closely here, all the colors, all the inequalities intersect through here. Okay, it's got to be below this boundary line here because uh, red goes down, right? Uh, green goes to the right, black goes up, and red goes down, and blue goes up. So they all intersect in this yellow triangle. So this is a corner point A, this is a corner point B, and this is a corner point C. So A is 0, 0,16. B is 0, 0,8, and uh, C it's right 1, 2, 3, up 1, 2, 3, 4, so 3, 4. So this right here is called your feasible region or your solution region. And the corner points or the vertices which solve the problems, okay, uh, this this is what George Danzig found out that the corner points or the vertices of the feasible region are the solutions to the problems. So we got to take a, b, and c, and we're going to minimize this function 2x plus y. So let's take this way down here. Here we go. We're going to take your each vertex, and we're going to mm, in this case minimize z. So let me see 2x plus y. So 2x plus y. So A, B, and C. So let's review here. Up here at A, 0, 16, and then B is 0, 8. So 0, 16, B is 0, 8, and then let me see, C, 3, comma 4. I always got to look at your answers here. So 3, comma 4, and what we want to do is substitute them in here. So Z is 2 times something plus Y. So remember, x is 0, y is 16. So 2 times 0 plus 16. Well, that's just 16, right? On the next one, 2 times 0 plus 8. Well, that's 8. And then z, well, this one takes a little thought. 2 times 3 plus 4, and that's 6 plus 4. And that's 10 right here. So the question is, is what creates our minimum? Because we want to minimize this. We want to minimize. So compare. We've got 16, 8, and 10. What's the smallest? What's the minimum? Well, it's right here. The minimum is 8 because it's the smallest. And that becomes our optimal solution. So we say the min equals 8, okay, at the point B, which is 0, 8. Or you can say the minimum occurs at point B, 0, 8. Okay? And that is our optimal, which, as I've been trying to say to you guys, which means our best solution. Our optimal best solution is point B, all right? Because that gives us gives us a minimum of 8. In a real problem, 0, 8 would stand for something. 0 items of something and 8 items of something else. Okay? In a real problem. You'll see that in my next lesson. Okay, so there's there's the next one here. So what you guys need to do is keep practicing. This is number 12. Uh, and included is 13 through 16. So you got to do this a few more times. So on the next one here, uh, it's going to, well, you got five inequalities on this one. Check this out. You got inequality one, two, three, and then this one, you got two more here. <clears throat> so you got four and five. So you got to graph this system of inequalities, and this time you want to maximize. All right, you want to maximize your function. So go ahead and pause the video and go ahead and get started and check my solutions when I send them out. This is Mr. Ainsworth, and this has been a lesson on linear programming basics here. And in my next lesson, we're going to apply everything and solve a real problem. I'm talking about a real linear programming problem. All right, always give your best. Check your answers with mine, and I'll see you then. This is Mr. Ainsworth. Bye-bye.